those are the uh, the, the the you know the uh, failed class of 1999 to 2000 and uh, I mean if they did good you you could tell like Nigeria is poverty capital of the world today. Sure you get Nigeria is poverty capital of the world today, and that is not anybody's making other than uh, the criminals who have had the chance to change the fortune of Nigerians and they didn't. Well, they did change the fortunes of Nigerians to what you have today, the burden of Africa. Nigeria is a burden in Africa, and a lot of Africans are already showing that to Nigerians. The other day, Seychelles, you know, Seychelles said that uh, they don't want anybody that is holding Nigerian passport. She's not me. I've been at you. Go Seychelles, go commit uh, the crime. Eh? Not me and you. But here we are. When you elect uh, a drug baron, and you have the history of uh, your citizens smuggling drugs to wherever they can be sent to. Because according to them, if you want to be out of poverty, do anything to be out of poverty, my brother. A lot of people, you know, Nigerian anthem is that. Every time they'll be asking, what is the source of your wealth? What is the source of your wealth? But in Nigeria, nobody, they ask for the source of your poverty. Do you see that? Uh, have you not heard that before? Eh? Man, this guy, where did this guy get money? What did this guy they do? My friend, shut up your mouth. What, what's your business with what he does? He's rich. He's a hardworking man. He's kinikon, go, kinikon. Go. What's your business? Every time, every time you'll be asking, what's the source of his money? What's the source of his money? Have you ever asked for the source of his uh, poverty? Baba, I don't have to ask you for the source of your poverty when I know the source of the poverty in Nigeria. It's not hard. Eh? It is not. Somebody was talking about... Uh, Nigerians should, you know, on this platform, people will say, Nigerians should wake up. Nigerians should wake up. This kind of life is not life. You cannot continue to live like this and all of that. They should wake up. This, this, they, they need to know that they need better life. And I was like, do you actually know, does, no, does an average Nigerian know what is a better life for real? Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Eh? Average Nigerian. Does an average Nigerian ever know anything called better life? Ever. Can then an average Nigerian describe what it means to have a better life? Baba, it will shock you. What, an, what, what better life means to average Nigerians who have been dipped in generational poverty? It will shock you. There was this uh, video. In fact, it's like... Uh, you know those things they call the home makeover? Maybe when I don't make small money now, I go to do that one for people in Nigeria. It's quite good. And, you know, it will, it will tell you that people don't actually need much from their government. Not that you should hand it to them. No. Just create conducive environments where they can multiply, create, and lead better life. In that video, they did the uh, home makeover for this old man and it's a small family. Emotion. Now you see this old makeover, you know how the houses in Lagos are? Let us forget all this mega nonsense that some of you are, you are living that, in that bubble that you are living. Forget that for now. Let's, let's talk man to man now. Lagos, sure you get. I've got properties in Lagos, you know that. Eh? I grew up in that same Lagos too. I was born in that Lagos. My family is part of that Lagos. When I say my family, I'm talking about real indigenous people of that Lagos. We are Ijebu. Sure you get. And Ijebu owns Lagos too. Kind of. Eh? So let's talk man to man. You know what it is like in the house of, when you go to Moshe, eh? And you go into those face me, I face you. Face me, I slap you compounds. Okay? And you know how messy and trashy it can actually be. Including... Having to share the same toilet, the same bathroom, and all of those things like normal life. That you are, you know, like in that part of, uh -huh. that's where this guy went, this YouTuber. And he picked this family, okay, to give them home makeover. And what did he do? If you see where they were living, the couch, the room, the wall, the, you know, you know what I'm saying, Abby? They were really poor. But they didn't see themselves as uh, poor, 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 poor that way, okay? Because you know something, what they believe they needed. Eh? Okay, I'll tell you. This guy now brought in uh, painters, 
uh, brought in people who could actually like redesign the room uh, in a way that uh, they brought in new furnitures, new flooring, uh, you know, <clears throat> refrigerator, uh, electric uh, generator, electric generator, by the way, not electric generator, generator, big one. You know those ones that you can use ski to start. And within that space, I think they also kind of manage to create its own uh, private bathroom and toilet. Sure, you get where they don't have to go and share the public toilet in that same compound anymore. It was just so little change. And they were interviewing this old man. Oh dear, you need to see the joy on his face. And he was describing what just happened to him. And he said, I am so, so, so happy that he never believed that he would ever live in, live in such, I mean, live in such a house in his life. He hasn't left the same building, oh, just make over. And he said, he is so grateful to God Almighty, okay, that look at him, somebody who is not a rich man. I'm not a rich man. Now, look at my house. Look, I have my own toilet. Oh, I have my own bathroom. I look at my uh, TV. Look, I have my own generator outside. Eh? This is the kind of life that people who are like commissioners, ministers, that's how they live. A poor man believed that uh, that makeover has automatically pumped him to the category of the life of uh, ministers, commissioners, rich people. In that little change, in that small space, that's how poor these criminals have made our people. Very poor. In fact, they say now that uh, it's about 8K. What can 8K do for you? Ah, what can 8K buy? My friend, shut up your mouth. Do you know what 8K means to the poor people? They are talking about the people they've actually weaponized. The poverty. Yeah? So you just have to be like, man, how do you see those people and say they are your leaders? I don't know. I don't know how you see those people and say they are your, they are your leaders. Like, why are you lying? Eh? They are not leaders. They are dealers. And now they have the ex-convicts. Lucky Binedion, as the spokesperson for the Nigerian past governors, the 1999 to 2007 past governors of Nigeria, uh, uh, sorry, 2000, I mean 1999 to 2007 sets. I require to wear blues. After the reggae play the blues, the blues, the blues. So you get now blues when the bedou enter body very well. Eh? Now the same reaction everybody could give, including those who are kind of uh, urging them or nodding them on. So yeah, I don't see them as that. But Kalu, eh? Who happened to be the person who uh violate or violated democratic uh, process in Nigeria to make himself the press idiot. And he's such an empty skull, unfortunately, that when he got to Kenya, Nairobi, you know, he needs validation. He needs these pictures. He needs all these things to make it look like he's president. So you get. So he got to Kenya. We started shouting. Uh, we must stop coup. We must defend democracy. We must protect democracy. Don't shock Benny you now. My friend, stop shouting. We know who you are. He started shouting in Nairobi. Democracy. We must do everything about democracy. We must uh, stop a uh, coup. We must stop coup. I remember that uh, Bokwari's uh, interview when he was talking about uh, himself. He said, Bokwari, tell us about, uh, please, Mr. President, please tell us about your yourself. Tell us about yourself. Who is Muhammad Bukhari? You remember that interview? Bukhari was like, uh, well, uh, my name is uh, uh, Muhammadu Bukhari. And uh, if you remember, in Nigeria, during that time when I joined the army, and then uh, we always have this Ku kanta ku, ku kanta ku, ku kanta ku. Kilo she with a yiki, when you ku kanta ku. Anyway, that was him describing himself. He said he became, he became prominent. 
If you remember those time, ku kanta ku, ku kanta ku. That's exactly what this guy was shouting in Nairobi. We must stop ku in Africa. We must strengthen them. But he didn't say it himself at first. Sure you get. When he got to Nairobi, I don't know where he disappeared to. He showed up for photo up like he did in Paris. Hmm? So back then in Paris, he was seen to have walked into the place, took pictures, and disappeared. Then he all showed up later, like a don, like a bat that he is. And he was looking like somebody who was lost. You know that grandpa that was lost inside the, in the middle of the mall. And you're like, ah, that man look lost. Sorry, Baba, do you need help? So yeah, I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my, uh, my, my, uh, what are you looking for, old man? What's your name? That was how uh, Kolu was looking in Paris. Then he came back. They said, ah, president, world leaders, they were fighting themselves to see Kolu. Oh, yeah. Show us photo. Show us video. Nowhere. So they said he got to Kenya. And the, uh, Kolu's representative said, President Kolu said, Africa should shun Ku Kanta Ku and Ku Kanta Ku. Anyway, I got some I can share with you. They're not really anything interesting. I'll show you know. I've told you before. Do not anticipate to watch Kalu with anything reasonable. Just, just watch like, you know, like that old man. That, I don't know. So he was there, and this was him when he walked into the place when they got to Nairobi. Okay, well, at first he left Nigeria. Watch this. This was last. I mean, last night. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was chatting with my friends on TikTok again. So that was Kalu living in Nigeria last night. Then he surfaced today. Yeah, at Egmoro, Ojoka Gogo, watch him. Ojoka Gogo. Right. 
he was there to take pictures. He needed that. Yeah? And it was time for him to talk. They didn't make him a chairman this time. Why didn't they make him a chairman like Ekwa's uh, president, Abekwa's chairman? So they can say, congratulations. The, the African president are so happy to see him. I can't wait for Dele Alakori, by the way. You know, Dele Alakori is going to come back and tell us everything that didn't happen. Uh -huh. In case if you don't know how to monitor them, I'm just giving you the hints. When you hear anything from Dele Alakori, listen, that is called Louis your press idiot. In the rest of the world, eh, all over the world, leaders of countries, they make statements, impromptu interview, uh, you know, sometimes they ambush them, ambush them uh, at different, different international parties or forums like that. They are fora, yeah? And you just, you know, different media will hold you. President of a country, you speak clearly, sharply, you don't hide away. But in Nigeria, they will bring ancestors, demented as ancestors. That can only just mumble for a few minutes, gone. So they will now bring, they will now hire some vuvuzelas, eh, as a spokesperson. Now those ones will come to explain to you. So anytime you see Delhi Alakori talking, eh, anytime when he is telling you, waiting if Nubu no tells you, he is just telling you what didn't happen. That's how you should be seeing him now. Every time Delhi Alakori is telling you about something. Just believe that you are listening to something that never happened. Ah, when President uh, President Ifunubu got to Kenya, he was uh, Kineko, it didn't happen. That didn't happen. Do you understand? Ah, the president, all these African president, they were queuing over their head to meet. That did not happen. Ah, President uh, Ifunubu's idea and policy all over Africa is that never happened. That's how you should be looking at him. If you really want to keep your sanity, but if you go to listen to Dilela Alakori, you go just they get angry unnecessarily. Imagine you being angry watching that clown. I've told you many times. Sometimes he gets angry because they are lying to you. Know I don't like being lied to, especially somebody lying to me and then uh, kind of feel like I'm stupid to believe them. It's annoying, isn't it? I think that's how some of you will feel. But again, eh? The moment you have that mindset that uh, Omo, when Dilela Alakori is talking. When the Lala Kori is even reading something to you, he wrote them himself, all right? Those things are lies. They are not real. They will never happen. Quote me anywhere. You go know later. Huh? I'll be here with you when uh, Femi Opo, no, Adeshino, was writing his own, uh, Sheikh Bedu, I became long time, yes, in the sun. Eh? Sunday, Sunday, he will come and write all this John Dice nonsense about Bokwari, how Bokwari was treating them like children. How they are seeing him as father. Eh? How Bokwari sometimes ago, when they were in France, eh? and then eh, because eh, he, eh, Femi Okunu Adeshino, he didn't like to eat Akara Neko. I mean, Akara Neko. So they decided to go and source for Akamu. It was President Buari who asked people to say, I need you to find Akamu for Femi. That's what Papa do. Presidential spokesperson, you know, he'll be writing that on uh, media and say, ah, Buari was so, ah, he was like a father. You know, he cares so much for him. Ah, he loved him so much. And because he has seen him so close, that, ah, how could somebody so love somebody like this, eh? Me, Femi, loved by Buari. And you, the rest of you are abusing him on social media. Do you even know what this man is? That's what that one was doing, you know. He'll be, and then when he wants to attack people, that say anything about Bokwari, or more, you know they hold bow. But when it comes to Dele Alakori, those ones, eh, they will lie to you. They will come threaten you if you question them and say, sir, you said, you said in your whatever, whatever that, uh, can you please explain that further? What do you mean? Who send you? Did they send you to come and start? Which, which station do you represent? I'm from Arise News, sir. You see, that's the problem. That's why we don't want Arise News to come around us. You like to create trouble. You like to create problems. Eh? Why can't you just be like other people? I say, ah, what's going to happen? Eh? So if we now say that, okay, they should sanction you and don't come here. I say, ah, I just said you should explain further, sir. What you said, can you explain that further? What explain? What explain do you need again? In fact, you are all thinking this government, this government is not going to take any nonsense from any media. Let me tell you, any media that is trying to sabotage this guy, what thing we ask? What thing they talk? Their own is different. Cheer you get.
they will gaslight you. Eh? They will lie to you. They will gaslight you for not believing the lie. They will come threaten you for even trying to even prove stubborn and say, you know, believe the lie. I have never seen any kind of uh, Shana, psychotic. No, not psychotic. They can't have a name for them. Uh, narcissistic people but like that. It's so unfortunate that uh, Professor Wale Shoyinka did not show any kind of honesty when he jumped, uh, he jumped off these guys. Eh? And he told uh, the world that the obedient are fascist. People will force their own thing on you. If you don't agree, you are an enemy. You see, if all of us are Nigerians and we have all equal rights, if you say you want something, I say, no, I don't want, I don't agree. Why does that make me an enemy? Eh? It makes me an opposition who disagree with you. And if I have an opportunity to get, you, to get rid of you, to get those who, be, who I believe in to take that charge. It is called democracy. A will enemy. Every small thing, you'll be enemy. We know that you don't like him. We know that you are enemy of a... It will enemy. And because they have made it official, you know, in their government, too. if you don't go with them, you are an enemy. And as I have shown you, let me show you this one, okay? Uh, this is a call talking about coup, democracy. Person we rigged election. Compromised electoral process, compromised uh, democratic process, and is battling legitimacy. In the Nairobi, they talk about coup, coup, counter coup. Really. Challenges with this mean that governors will be difficult. They also mean that visionary good government is necessary. Some observers have said. A new country for Africa is a food arm. It is much like the old scrum that plundered our continent. But here and now, let it be said to whoever the new scramblers might be. Our continent may be old, but our spirit is new. And it is true for the man that took place in the past must not stay yet. It shall never be, heard, be repeated. ECOWAS continue to strengthen effort to maintain peace and security in the region by ensuring the conduct of peaceful elections in member states to deepen democracy and promote good governance. you he was trying to read and be like somebody will be like a like normal person but it's not okay so i was saying something again to my friends on tiktok i want to tell you i said do you know that i can be nice i can be this polished uh what's the what's in this uh politically correct people like to say you know i can be very kind of you know use some nice words to still talk without having to, you know what I mean? Be like uh, we read Tifnumbu, Atifku, and the rest of that, like I do call them, okay? So I was telling people on TikTok there that, uh, listen, every time, where everything that comes out of my mouth, eh, none of them is by misfire. Ah, maybe boy, I can hear misfire. Ni. Ah, maybe that's not what my ego wanted to say. Ah, maybe my ego is angry. No, no. If I give you facial expression, based on whatever I'm saying, is to knock the message to you very well, right? You know, I can't be saying something so serious and be laughing, or kind of cracking you up. Okay, I do. I do crack you up even when I'm uh, saying something serious. Or you see all this facial expression, uh, what do you call it? Then when I drop all those, you know, those big, big uh, words, weary, I want loof, I want weary. You see, when I say things like that, I actually say them to get you, those of you who are watching, and somehow, somehow, you like what I'm doing, okay? But you are like a closest supporters of these criminals. You are the type that will be like, ah, che, you know, get father for our sini. I mean, you should show some home training. You know what I mean? I mean, you can still deliver your message without having to be very vulgar and all that nonsense. So I kind of like that to help you. Che, you get. Like, 
when I'm using those words on those criminals, right? And you can't take it anymore. I oh, mean, I can't take this anymore. I'm out of here. No, 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 I can't take this anymore. This guy is so, so, kineko, kineko. what is wrong with him? all that stuff? Eh? I love getting you angry. Imagine you getting angry watching a program like this in your house. Eh? Ah! Ah! You are doing all that madness in your house because you are watching my yugu. And your family come out and say, ah, eh, Daddy, kilo, what happened? Are you okay, sir? Kilo de, sir? I'm on inumbi, mi gong. Inumbi, yin sitani. Yes, sir, why don't you just change the channel? No, I can't change it. It's just that this guy, yeah, I, you know, all that stuff. So it's all about, it's like punishing yourself unnecessarily. Go water. Imagine getting angry because somebody says something about Bokuari or Tifnumbu or any of those rogues. Somehow, somehow, it touch you. You can't type aggressively. You decrease, you this, my ego, you this, kiniko, kiniko. God punish you. Hey, give me back. Uh, you know the work. You are just reacting to what exactly how I wanted to react. And it's good. Because my friends can have somebody to feast on too. You know how that feels? Where you finally can't take it and you have to come out and start shouting. And people started saying, ah, you know, go better for your papa too. You know, go shake You know that, eh? It's interesting. But the bottom line is that, eh, show what, eh? Like, does it worth it? Long argue with social media because of Tifnumbu, because of APC, with what they have done to you so far. Like if to say there are some terrestrial power after your life, Baba, you are still fighting on my guns diary political, where they are trying to, where I am actually trying to heal you of your madness. Odun binu say me no. Even they say person, they say the day where madman realizes that uh, he's a, he was a man, I mean, he's a madman. Is healing have started? Eh? You are arguing here. Everywhere they will see you. On Twitter, you are there. On Instagram, you are there. On TikTok, you are there. Eh? On Facebook, you are the champion. They are calling you a motifnubu, a mojagaban. Aye, and tap pow, pow, pow. Aye, I want to around. They're going to tap boo, boo, boo. Tinyinu, luju, nyinbe. Eh? Let's even say nobody told you. Say you the mad. Eh? That the world is collapsing around you. That the crumbs will not save you. You can't jam my egun's diary political. Otu logbe we to war. Eh? Odala japa wanja. Onja antori tani. You are fighting because of APC. She aye o ti run. At this age. How old are you? Eh, you. How old are you? <laughs> anyway. Going forward. Kolu is going to stop uh, coup in Africa. And I kind of uh, bet it that nobody believed him. Trust me, nobody believed him. And that is why, somehow, somehow, I am more interested in what you think is going to happen if the court remove him. Shamalo Jawa, Nimo Kuku Gure Gereti. Abi Abalo, what's going to happen? Eh? You will tell me. So, what I'm going to do next is that uh, I am going to take uh, a short break. Then come back and take calls just before I go to bed, okay? So I'm finishing early uh, tonight. So thank you so much for spending your evening so far with me. And I've got a few other things to say, but man, I'll just keep them for now. Uh, so you can still like my broadcast. Share it if you haven't already. And you can pick up the phone. Let's have a chat and see how far that goes tonight. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to go make my... I don't read the social media anymore. <laughs> they abuse hell out of me. <laughs> if I read it, I get high blood pressure. I get angry. I don't read it. So, if I want to hear anything, my children or any of Jesus is 
Hello there. Hello, my good, good evening. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You very well. Thanks for asking. Happy Sunday to you. Yeah. Happy Sunday to you too. Thank you. How is my family? How is Abi Agbeke? And... We are very well. Wow. And it... Agbeke is not really feeling strong there again, but yeah, we're fine. Thank you. Thank God for that. Thanks, yeah. Man. Yeah, thank you for everything you are doing for for us, thank both you. in Nigeria and in diaspora. We That's appreciate right. you. I know you know that. I do. Um, you see, Nigeria case is a very sad case. Very pathetic, very pathetic. And when you are trying to let them realize, they don't seem to understand. So I think they are all in in their they are all daydreaming. That's just the way I see it. Because if you want to talk about the stupid subsidy palliative or whatever, if mm -hmm. is going to give them, that Inubu is going to give them, I don't know. How that eight thousand naira, even the eighty thousand naira cannot do a thing. How much less eight thousand naira for a, for each household? For even if she's going to, even if Tinubu is if Nubu is going to give them for sixty years, it's not still going to help nobody. Talk less of six months, whatever. It is insultive. Like I listened to one podcast yesterday. Showore was on the podcast with Sheyun Wakibaloye. Hmm. And a man just called in and said that eight thousand naira is insultive, and that's exactly the word for it. It is, is so so insultive. It is so discriminating. It is so everything. It is so bad. I don't know. And one man said yesterday that they should have to ask if Numbu and all his gang that is his family feeding on eight thousand naira for hmm. for I mean forty eight thousand naira. That is eight times six. Yes, 48,000 Can his family months. survive on 48,000 Can months? his family survive on that amount for six months? Hmm. Now he finds it easy to come on the national television to say this is how much he's going to give to each household and 12, 12 million household. So in Nigeria now, we the whole population is, uh, is 12 million. Yeah, they are we, now 12 million. We, they are now 12 million. It's so pathetic. Honestly, it is bad. And it's got no other name than bad. I just feel sorry for everybody. And I know they said we should pray for God to, I mean, to God to help them. But when you do the right thing, that's when God is ready to listen that's to what you prayer. want to do. That's true. But when you are doing the wrong thing and now you are saying, oh, let's just be optimistic. I said, oh, that's the word. Op op optimism activated our be. And one girl said, oh, Means be my name is Bibire, by the way. <laughs> Bibire. Bibire, are you are you cruise catching or what exactly are you doing? It, it looks like you are making fun. I said, Yes, I'm catching my phone so hmm. much because I see you all not facing the reality. I see you all not knowing what you want to do. You don't know what you want for yourself. No, Otherwise, you are not going to sit down there and it's say hmm. when your life is going haywire. When a a, a a derica of rice costs that much, when people are dying, when people cannot even feed themselves, they can't feed, they, there is no water, there is no food, there is no security, there is nothing absolutely. And then when you talk now, they say, oh, do you think Obi can do it? I'm not even talking about Obi. I'm not even talking about Atifko. I am talking about a nation. And a nation consists of people that have the same language. That is what they call a nation. So when you come and attack me on my page and oh, do you think Obi can do it? It's not about Obi or Atifku or whoever. Mm. I want a nation that works. A nation is defined uh, yeah. by the language and the cultural heritage they share together. We don't have anything to good to do with all those people that they strap us together with. Let everybody go their own way. Let's manage our affairs. When we were regional, we were doing good. We Let's go back to that, at least. Thank but you so much. You know what? Let me, so let me, let me also them. kind of take more so that uh, we can make it an interesting night for everyone too. Thank you yeah, for yeah. that contribution, sir. Thank you so Appreciate much. That, you eh? too. Yeah. Thank you. Have a you. Good Bye. One. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I yeah. have uh, another caller on the line. Hello there. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, it's nice coming 
first time on your show. Thank you. My name is Chike, calling from Oregon. Uh, Chike from Florida. Did I hear that right? No, Oregon. 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 Sorry Oregon. about that. Okay. How are you doing, Chike? I'm doing pretty good. Good. I just want to put my two cents from the last caller. Please. Which one is the 8,000 if Tunumbu is given, it's for 12 million people, estimated people that voted for him. Because you cannot tell me out of 250 million, you extracted 12 million to give 8,000 steel. And that's a plan. It's an hmm. It's a slap on our face. But that 12 million are only people who voted for him. Hmm. That's the only people who voted for him. Let's call it for what it is. Thirty-five billion is to bribe the judiciary. That's right. The one that's something million for the uh, National Assembly is for them to shut up for whatever Magumago they intend to do. That's right. Going forward with this petition, so Nigeria is doomed. The country is doomed, bro. Let's call it for what it is. Those we APC want to be honest. and Dadi people. They just want to give them that peanut to show that in case if we go on rerun, remember, yeah. just this is uh, just in case, in case we're going on rerun, we want to hold you. Mm. Once you still want to hold this first million, just in case. That's it. And we now lobby for more people to see if they can vote for us to win so again. How many more we can get extra? They are preparing, hmm. they, are preparing, they are preparing all their options to see either way in that way, this is strong, strangle, stranglehold holding Nigeria. Why, why, I mean, why the threat? This, the is so tough. Eh? Why the threat? Eh? Why are they threatening everyone if he's already bribing them? Like we have seen so far, why are they threatening? Like if they if they fail to deliver, who's chaos or uh, anarchy? Are they talking about? No, they hmm. they throw they throw they throw front those big big way hmm. to demoralize you to to counter you to break your bones so you wouldn't be able to breathe. Remember they were calling Obi prison, uh, Dati Ahmed prison, even before the result. Well, they have been calling, it's just like literally, you have a criminal case here in America. They charge you those big, big charges. They know it's not what it is. They, they want you to negotiate. So that's the style they're using. That's the style. They're criminal. What do you expect from them? Nothing good can come out of them. No. Nothing. Nothing. Thank you so much. Asari yeah. Dukudu went to the, to the government seat of power mm. and at the addressing conference. At who? A non-political actor. You can see what's going on. And everybody shut up. Nobody can and challenge them. And he accused them. the security, the, the ISR, I mean, the Iraqi officials of the Nigerian security of collaborating with I mean, criminals to I mean, steal crude oil. And nothing happened. Just imagine. Hi. My brother. Nigeria is ah, in for it. Man. Chike. Thank man. you. A lot of us are waiting for what will happen. You, anyway. Right? Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Baba. Have a good one, okay? So, uh, let me... Oh, why did I lose that? Okay, hang on. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, some of you were actually like calling in uh, through the WhatsApp. You got yourself uh, knocked out because of those who are calling directly. Well, it is what it is. Okay. Hello there. Hello, my good. Good evening. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. I'm I'm fine, thank you. It's a fine. How are you doing? It's fine. I'm very fine, thank you. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Mayagun, 25%, all those nonsense, the tribunal, anarchy, chaos, all those things you are saying. I don't really want to dwell in all of them okay. because uh, okay. all these are problems. Everybody, I believe, up to 15 years in Nigeria already know there's a problem. Their parents know what the problems are. So every one of us, every caller, everybody following your program knows there's a problem, and we know what the problem is. So they cannot begin to tell you, Ibo, Awosa, 
Yoruba, this one, that one, this, that. The Arab, the Hausa people or the Fulani people have similar culture to the Arabs. To buy people love life. Kuwait people love life. Saudi Arabia people love life. What I mean is like, their own brand of millionaires live very, very good life. They enjoy life, which means they love to sell. So you can't tell me it's religion. Because hmm. those who carry that religion for head, but they love good life. Even the West cannot live the kind of life people from Dubai are living. So they love good life. So anybody telling you that religion is the problem, it's not. Hmm. Yoruba people, people might have their issues separately, but then every Yoruba one wants to see a good road. Every Yoruba one wants to see a good road. I want my children to go to school. Why go to want to go to good school? So there is something in common between me and my Egun. All of us want free trade. Everybody wants to be happy. So what you have is that during the age of enlightenment in Europe, they have this sort of thing. So don't think Europe, Europe has always been an island. People like NC, all these kind of things were happening during their own time. It's why we had the Second World War. People, there was chaos everywhere, but people have always found a way to say to their leaders, this can't work anymore. It can't continue. So during the Arab Spring up, so many things happened. Sorry, man. What happened in Egypt? During the Arab Spring up, these people do, didn't have small businesses, didn't have power. So the, the, the whole place collapsed. So they want to tell their government that this cannot continue. This is no more possible. So what you have is that less than 10 years after, Egypt is exporting power to Europe. Do you know that this, Egypt is now exporting power to Europe? I do. They have solved their power problem and they are now exporting to Europe. When the whites were managing South Africa, everything was okay. My Egun, they left it in the hands of blacks. Now they are declaring an emergency on power in Africa. So in South Africa. What I'm trying to tell you is that I'm beginning to think that there is something wrong with our DNA wiring or coding. Because everybody understands the problem. Mm. But nobody is saying, let's do the right things. Let us do the right things. Chase these criminals away so that they stop sharing your money. Mm. Over 50% unemployment. There is no other place in the world where 20% unemployment. Hmm. Unemployment in UK will cause crisis. So Nigerian people are patient people. We are too patient. Europe cannot, there's no part of Europe that can tolerate 20% unemployment. It's not possible. How can that be? So you see what's going to happen now. In a few years' time, if we continue all this rubbish, you see all those countries in Arab area, Arab Africa, North Africa. Already Morocco is saying that they are not part of Africa. Do you blame them? Do you blame them? All those North African countries, when they continue to watch all these things, they're going to find a way to start doing their own thing. Or maybe they join the Arab entire because they want to understand what's going on this side. Nigeria needs to wake up. We need to wake up. This is not a matter of 25% or Abuja. Everybody knows what the problem is. We need to fold our trousers, fold our shirts. People who love good education, people who want good roads, mm. who want us to solve in power, who want us to solve problems in judiciary. How can you say that a, 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 a judge, Justice of Supreme Court, will go to, to, to be approved in the National Assembly and stand in front of criminals to get approval from them before the Supreme Court can function? People who should be able to look through the idiots are where people who will not visit those places to be to be to be what do they call it to be to be verified or confirmed. Mm. What kind of crazy? What are we doing? People need to wake up. All this is to complain and grammar won't solve the problem. Unless people want me to truly, there is something wrong with the DNA warning of the black man. There Thank you be, very much. Wayne. That's some area that we can we are we should be exploring. There could be something wrong with the selective uh, <laughs> process of our DNA, genetic, or whatever that uh, somehow somehow I, horrible people have been those I, who have been assuming power. Unfortunately. Before I go the former governor of my state, Chimaru Kenamari, was just a medical doctor. Hmm. And then he ruled for just eight years. He owns this one, he owns that one, he owns all these mighty stuff. Hmm. I know where the money is. So why can't I have people who are now as angry as I am and going to ask him, oh, oh, wait a minute, you didn't have all this in the fund. You ruled me for so, so years. And all of a sudden, you have all this thing. Hmm. Where is my money? So why can't people be angry like this? Why are you the only one angry that Tinubu is doing all this? Why are people finding it funny? 
If you people are finding it funny, if people are actually defending them. Yes. There is something wrong. So there must be. Tinubu cannot win any country in Europe. If you say Tinubu and Peter will be to stand for an election in the UK, it's a joke of an election. It's not. There's money going to the that. pool. Hmm. Joke. It's not. It's not going to be an election. If, if you take Tinubu and, and, and Peter will be and put them in US system and say vote for either of these two people, it's a joke. Peter will be won't campaign. It's a joke. It's a one way traffic. What is going on in Nigeria? Let me let, 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 let me go take another one there. Uh, uh, if I, as Thank usual, you've you. done so well again. Thank you so much for that insightful contribution. Thank you. Eh? Thank you. Yeah. Nice one. So I have another call. Hello there. Hello, my ego. How are you? I am very well. How are you, brother? I'm okay. I'm all right. The interesting individual. This is Mohammed. <laughs> Mohammed. Well, pick your bite. I mean, <laughs> sorry. What do you say? Like, say, pick your fights carefully. So, <laughs> eh? go on. Do you remember you? the first day I called you? Do you remember the first day I called you? Do you remember why I called you? Well, uh, you I called to that, tell uh, me that uh, I kind of uh, always don't didn't see anything good about Nigeria. And you no, 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 no. That was not the first day I called you. Well, the first day I called time. you, I was talking about uh, what you were talking about with judges. The way you're talking about judges and uh, okay, okay, the fact that uh, yeah, do you, do you remember? So I said uh, something. That when day. you start talking, I'll remember. Go on, Mohammed. So I said something that day. I said um, the issue with this situation, this tribunal situation, is uh, that uh, at the end of the day, uh, if the judges uh, think that the best thing is to is to I disqualify Tinubu and all that, that there's going to be serious chaos. Do you remember I, I, said, I, remember I that. said that to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and you're like, well. um, you're like, um, there's already that injustice, Ancient I don't anyway. know, mm -hmm. it postpones, uh, it postpones, I can't remember exactly how you put it. Okay, I'll remind you. Now, I said that uh, <laughs> if uh, you, if I remember very well what you said, you said something like, uh, the judges may come back and say, for the sake of, you know, uh, avoiding all these blah blah, they will just let Tinubu finish. And I was like, but there is already chaos everywhere. Maybe people don't, you know what I mean? Isn't that what yes, I said? Yeah. Uh, and I said, yes, whatever what happens, uh, whatever happens, it's like kicking the can down the road. People are already tensed. They are already, people already feel like uh, you know cheated, which is obvious. All right. Now, if the judiciary come about to legitimize it, it was just going to be like. You know, any small thing can trigger it uh, later, like kicking down, I mean, kicking the can down the road. But please. No, my God, I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. Don't lie to me. Oh, yeah. Someone like me. Uh -huh. Someone like me, I'm scared. Are you? I'm scared of what? Do you know why I'm scared? Why? If his lawyers can put it in their written address that there's going to be chaos and that things, there's going to be anarchy. <laughs> And Nigeria the judges is in trouble, will read like, that too, and they will say. Oh, and the judges will read that. If, hmm. the, if, if the lawyers can, if the lawyers can say that, then we should actually be expecting anything to happen. And if me, I'm not going to blame the judges if, at the end of the day, they don't disqualify him, because I know what they are thinking it's about. It's just going to be as your lordship you, faces in it. Well, it's yes, because I know what they are worried. thinking about. At the end of the day, I know that things are bad and things are tense already. But you know. Someone like you, I'm not trying to gaslight you. I know you say now that uh, <laughs> so you, you, you don't carefully. Go yes, on. I know you say that you now you're in um, you're in the UK, but you have family in Nigeria, so I you're do. concerned and all of that. We, I think <laughs> people in this country, they, like a couple of people, are actually scared. And maybe if you were here as well, I think you you'd be that concerned. Why do you think I do my program if I'm actually not worried? Eh? Do you know, it's because I am worried and I want all of you, if you are already worried, now my program is to justify your worry and say, okay, I think it makes sense now why I'm worried. So I'm not the only person. Mm -hmm. Now, if all of us are worried, indeed, it's probably for us to be able to kind of be in control of what is happening by understanding it. Sure you get Nobody is paid. Well, whatever happens, I just hope Nigerians will be truthful to themselves at the end of the day and um, we'll be able to have come together and have a discussion. And then you won't need to see my need to, to loss of life. Mohammed, Mohammed, let's tell us. Yeah, whatever it is, okay? whatever it is. That's why I said we should be truthful to ourselves. And I hope that it doesn't lead to a state yeah. of where life have lost. That's all. That's Hopefully, just Hopefully, we won't get to that. I mean, it's kind of yeah. avoidable, but at the same time, unavoidable too. You see where you have uh, injustice 
that actually reigns, right? So it's now, and yeah, then you yeah. have those who says oh, we are going to challenge this injustice. Now it's going to be at, you know, one person will have to like uh, go down anyway. So those who have the power will say it's not going to be us. And those who have, who they are of oppressed enough and with this injustice will say, we'd rather die than to live with this injustice. So when things get to that stage, eh, about when uh, 